Stripper Thursday! Woo! And we're doing Drake Session Ale tonight. What's up, Drakes? I am pretty excited Bam. about this one. I am too. And this is sort of the back end of the Drake Session Ale frenzy that has been online. So we're a little bit behind on that, mostly because we bought this a little while ago and then I went on vacation, so. Well, I don't we know, I don't we know if we're behind anything. I mean, it came, I think the first time it came out was last year. Yeah, it's an annual release. Uh, right, yeah. well, I, I'm, I'm talking about the freshness Nazis who are like, oh my God, this beer's not fresh anymore. This beer's oh, gonna taste fire. amazing right now, so what else? Right, I mean, it's not two minutes off the bottling line, but it's... Yeah, I don't know what the best buy date is on this necessarily, but... Uh... I just, I'm seeing a lot of people who are like, oh, I'm drinking all of mine, because if I don't drink them, they're gonna go bad. I'm like, they're so not gonna go bad, please. Well, I mean, yeah, you do get a better representation of the beer when it's somewhat fresh, but this beer, I mean, you're not dealing with a big, huge IPA here. You're dealing with a beer that's under 4%. Right, 3.8. Um, I mean, alpha how, session. how multi can it get? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. You know? And this is, this, is, um, this is done with the Maris Otter, it's done with Crystal 45, it's done with Two Row, um, and then it's dry hopped with Simcoe, Citra, and CTZ, which is Columbus, Tomahawk, and Zeus. No, Centennial. Mm -hmm. No, it's Col Columbus, Columbus? Yeah, Columbus, Columbus, Columbus Tomahawk Zeus. Yeah, yeah, they're they're the name. same hop, but they're different names. Depending, it's silly. It's CTC. Where's um, the joke? Where's the Zeus joke? That's Alan's dog. I oh, know. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. All right. So cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers to Drake's. We, have we ever done Drake's beer? Mm -hmm. of we did the Hopocalypse. That's right. We yes. did the blue in the garage. The, the green and the and the black. And the black. Green and the black. Yes. Oh, this is such a great beer. It still smells great. Oh yeah, it smells amazing. See, God, it's like candy. Yeah. See, like we we, we, so we talked good. before about how you know session beers are going to be the thing that it's it's kind of like the next wave, and this is a really great example because I mean I love hops, I love them, they're delicious, but I, you know every once in a while I want to sit down and have more wow. than two really really hoppy beers, and so something like this is perfect. I always want to sit down and have more than re two really hoppy beers. I always yeah. sit down and have more than two hoppy beers. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Well, I do too, but... <laughs> I it, want to have more than six without passing out. <laughs> when, you, when you're when you drinking, you know, something that's, you know, 11% compared to... <laughs> right. Three, three well, and yeah. with this, I mean, you're talking, you're talking about the dryness factor that you get off of it. Um, this is more of a, like, it's more difficult to do this type of session beer than it is to do, like, the brown or the like the the English session beers or the English bitters or whatever Mild. the milds yeah because those are those are very easy to sit and drink and drink and drink and that's all about ABV this though is going to get difficult because as a session beer you have to worry about ABV and then you also have to worry about how the hops are affecting you Bitterness. so if it, yeah if it's too bitter or it's too hoppy or it's too dry that's going to all affect that session viewpoint on it which Absolutely. and as a session beer that just means you're going to drink several in a session mm -hmm. well essentially what they've brewed here is a hoppy blonde ale Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I mean, I think yeah, the crystal exactly. malt takes it away from that blonde category, so you're kind of dealing with it's still pretty, an it's extra, still pretty SRM, yeah, an extra like, pale. Yeah. Well, I'm sure it's above five SRM, yeah, you know, yeah, or right on the border, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, it's not yellow, it's, it's got it's kind of glowing, it's got a straw it's, color, it's, it's got yeah. a, it's got a yeah. gold, it's got like a goldness to it, gold goldness, hint. but I gotta say, like, golden hint. I mean, this beer when I first had it, which was last year. Um, it was just like, this is, it's like, this, the, the, okay, we have arrived. Yeah. We have a hoppy beer that is good, awesome, dry, but it is only 3.8. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yeah. it's, 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 yeah, that's awesome. It, it really inspired me to brew. I mean, even now, everything, everything I've brewed over the last, I think, I don't know, four months has been around four or 5%. Mm. Just because why would I want, I mean, of course, there's a place for those big, alcohol yeah, beers exactly. but it's just nice to be for, able yeah, to for, drink for, for your day-to-day -day stuff it's nice to just have something that's exactly you know kind of mild. Right. do you guys get lime zest off of this lime zest that's like that i just picked that up right now which is kind of a on the nose bizarre thing no on the flavor like 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 the middle middle to the back of the palate for some reason i don't I know what's like the difference lime between lime and lime zest um pith hmm. what don't, up? don't spit at me yeah bitch <laughs> um, um, like, no, I, I do. I do get like a lime-ish kind of flavor on it. So what you're saying is it's just me? 
No, I no, I do get it. I'm just saying I don't know the difference between lime zest and lime. Well, I guess you're getting. He's asking it's if you It's more get of lime a bitter off. lime. Yeah, lime. I, do you get lime? Jesus it, Christ. Li, li, lime zest is one of those terms. Oh, I'm like, not trying to be a dick. I'm just. I, I thought maybe are. that was a thing. I'm so are. Lime zest is more the the oils, the citrus oil, so it's strong. Yes. Yes. There you go. That was from off camera. That was awesome. That happened. Well, um, I think oils stronger. You know, if yes. if you're getting the lime zest, I don't. I mean, my palate's not as refined as yours. I, I think I have. I, I'm really shitty when it comes to tasting beer. I know what I like, and you know, obviously. <laughs> You know, right. that whole thing. But John's like, this tastes I good. I don't get lime zest, like but to say you get a lime zest thing off of it just shows how flavorful this beer is for what it is. There's a lot of complexity know? to the hop quality. I, You know, it's like I get lime, but it's also kind of like a very, like, rounded citrus kind of character. Because, I mean, you do get some grapefruit off of it, obviously. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, you got some pretty grapefruity, you know, hops all up in that mess. I mean, even and, for the, um, the nose on it, it's got a nice fruity... You know, clean nose to it, but the right. malts still come through you very get, nicely. You still get some breadiness to it, yeah. You know, I think that this is another prime example of how Drake's just kills at making beer. Oh yeah, oh they just—they are phenomenal. Everything they do is delicious, and I—I I, I don't say that just being like fanboy. I'm saying like I've never had a Drake's beer where I'm like meh. Actually, you want to know something funny? Um, the I think I mentioned this on the Hopocalypse show, but Drake's IPA was one of the first hoppy beers that I ever had. That I yeah. was like, hops, yeah, fucking hops, man. You know, like <laughs> I, I, I had that, that. That was like one of my, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? What? Um, yeah. No, yeah. So I mean, kudos to them, and I love I love their labels. They're very they're they're very font like structured. They are like, very font. Like they use they use their fonts as their design. I elements, think what Steve is trying to say is they're well designed. Right, but I mean they're well designed using fonts. Like they, yes, they yeah. all their fonts are very predominant on there. They do a really good job with it. Whoever the designer is, kudos to you. Um, but if you can still find some Drake Session Ale, definitely do it. And if this is yeah, what it tastes session. like on the quote unquote older end of the beer mm -hmm. life, it still tastes fabulous. Exactly. You know, Absolutely. Yeah. So Good. we're gonna send you off to a master pairings, where stuff will happen and it will be amazing. And fabulous stuff. Yeah, and you'll just be sit there in awe. And <laughs> It'll be, be like, fabulous. Oh, in my your God, mouth. that just happened. Yeah. So go let that happen to you. <laughs> just let it happen. <laughs> Rape culture. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to another Master Pairings. I'm your host, Bill Sysak. We have Renee Rounds on the show from Hi. Renee Rounds Photography. Thanks for coming on, Renee. Thank you. So today we have one of my favorite, favorite Trappist beers. It's a great, everybody loves the Trappist beers. They love Rochefort, they love Rochefort 10. That's the big one. Rochefort 8 is an over 9% Belgian strong ale, Abbey ale, and it's big with some great notes. Would you like to open and pour? Sure. Um, so it, it's one of my favorite Trappists, um, quite delicious. Uh, it's gonna have winter fruit notes, but also it's gonna be a little more subtle than the 10, not as over the top, not as sweet. It has kind of a little mola molasses, I like to say. Cheers, Cheers, my dear. Not as sweet, it's still there. Yeah. It's a classic Abbey ale, but it's got that molasses and toffee. Exactly. Caramel's not as big, but it's still there. It's not as big on the dark fruit as. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's not that big quad flavor, but it's right going into that. It's quite delicious. So we have some delicious speck. Yes, it's called speck, spelt just like you would think, S-P-E-C-K. Um, think of it as, it's a basically a ham uh, found in the Tyrol region. So it's in Italy, Austria, things like that. Uh, it's. Cure, dry cured and smoked, it's delicious. Um, and it's very underrated, so just dig in. I know you want or to. I am salivating. A lot of them are aged in juniper. I believe this one was. It has definitely some of that berry note from yep. that. Great salinity, but very mild. Not overly salty, not way over the top. It's not super smoky either for being a smoked. Rich. Um, I'll use the word unctuous. Unctuous means kind of a oily coating, but it, it really is appropriate here. It doesn't overwhelm and it's not off-putting. It's in a good way. It 
it just really go, covers the palate with this really fun. Exactly. So I saw you sneak a sip. And, um, what do you think of it? This is amazing. The the sweetness really does go well with that oiliness of the meat. Oh. It just it's like butterly smooth. It does, and then you almost get a smokiness from the beer as it plays. That's yeah. where that's where the smoking and dry curing of this really comes through. Wow, that's a fun pairing. That's really good. Um, this beer obviously great caramelization to it, so it's going to have that classic play on the Maillard reaction, the uh, browning of meats or the curing of meats, the browning of uh, breads, that crust. It gets all those effects. So even though this is smoked, it's still got that intense flavor. Mm -hmm. And it's going to go really well with the uh, any of these great uh, beers. Uh, brown ales will go well, porters, uh, dunkels, uh, doubles, Belgian doubles. Uh, this is, like I said, a bigger than a Belgian double. It's really closing in on that Belgian dark strong ale. But it pairs really well. And usually I try to just take a couple bites on these. This when I'm, doing is, this, but I'm, I'm going gonna in for keep more. going. Yeah. No. Uh, the, you're, you know, you're looking at the fat on here, but the fat is so decadent it's, and relaxed. I mean, uh, the flavor profile is really good. <laughs> there may not be any left for the crew. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And as the beer hits your palate, when you have the speck in your mouth, it kind of just dissolves all together into a uniform flavor. You would think that the layer of fat would make it a little bit more chewy, but it's just smooth it just and... Melts. Yeah. Um, you know, it's dried, so, you know, you're pulling it apart. It's almost like, like they're pulling it apart. It's almost like beef jerky. But cutting it so thinly allows it to uh, easily dissolve on the palate, and it really picks up these wonderful nuances that are just fabulous. Great. So Karen. you like it? I love it. Cool. Excellent. Renee, thank you for coming on. Thank you for Thanks having me. Thanks for watching. Me. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. And we're back. Hello. Yeah. Welcome back to the show. Um, Matt, top us off, would you please? And meanwhile, I will talk about things that are happening. Uh, next week, we're going to have a really cool show. We're going to be sitting with uh, Greg Cook, Drew Curtis, and Will Wheaton. Oh, hey. I'm, I'm, I'm who, very okay, excited. So who are these people? Greg. <laughs> He's like, I don't know who these people are. Greg, Greg is Cook. the CEO of Stone. Yes. Uh, Drew Stone. Curtis is the creator and founder of FARC.com. FARC. FARC. Not fart, but FARC. F-A-R-K. Um, which is a comedy news style website and will wheaton is just a dude just a dude yeah He's just that guy he was just know. on the cover of beer advocate yeah just on the cover of beer advocate and you might know him from such Sometimes things they just as stand by me on the cover, and you know? you know that's why i was on the cover star trek but you know will Family has guy. become uh, yeah it's that thing um will's become kind of a prolific home brewer and he's been very po vocal about very, that very it was a really good article really that right, you know, he was on the cover of beer advocate it was a good article like he talked about, about his family history of the brewing history of and, yeah like, he's a legitimate brewer like it's yeah not, he's like which oh. kind of surprised me a little bit i was like oh that's cool that's cute that you're getting into this hobby but i'm like oh you're actually well, having just, actually yeah, it, so. you just thing. assume you know things that's about cool. people and no no you know, yeah. don't know anything you don't really know anything but so, so apparently uh drew and will and greg got together they did a collaboration beer we're going to be doing a show on that next week that's the going wheat. to be the uh the woot stout the stone farking, farking wheat and woot stout farking. um is the official name which Fark is a mouthful. farking <laughs> um so yeah that'll be awesome um we're gonna be and it's, it's, i would uh, say we're gonna be there but that was last night so awkward um but coming up we have on august 10th is the um uh, Full Pints 6th anniversary. Sixth. I'm like, Sixth. what year is it? Fuck. 6th uh, anniversary. That's at 38 yeah. Degrees. You should be there. Which, by the way, again, awesome. awesome beers on tap. It's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. It's going to be so great. Um, the day after that is uh, Blue Palms Brewhouse 5th Anniversary. That's and the day after? Yeah, oh, really? August Ooh. 11th. Wow. So it's going like to be a weekend. For a hangover. Yeah, it's going to be a weekend of drinking. That's a power, um, that's a power Because weekend. Blue Palms, if you know anything about Blue Palms Brewhouse, they're amazing and awesome, and they have all kinds of amazing beers. Yeah, you beers. can expect the same epicness. Right. Actually, and I, so. I, th I think what was like the fourth show I ever did. With right. Beers, was the 120 minute IPA yeah, there. The yeah. yeah. The so, and that's the other thing is there's going to be right. super rare beers on tap. It's going to be amazing. Check out their Facebook page and their website for information on what's on tap. You can buy tickets on their website. Um, you can also buy them at the bar if you want to stop in and check them out. So, Anything else? 
Um, and then Bill is going to be at a couple of different locations. He's going to be at Verdugo's um, cigar and scotch and beer thing that's coming up on August 8th, I believe. And then he's also going to be at GMBF speaking. So he'll be representing Newber Thursday at GMBF since I can't make it. Good, so to, have, good, good to have an MBT. Yeah. GMBF, the uh, okay. premier so uh, Midwest uh, beer fest. Yeah, the premier. Uh, Which at this um, point uh, could be... Uh, it could be better than GABF because, yeah. God, that's turning into a shitstorm. Talk about a <laughs> like, shutout. Yeah, seriously. No, I think the problem with GABF, though, is that they don't have the room. Yeah, they're just getting too big. Yeah, that's um, a, which is the, great because yeah, there's move so to, many move awesome to San birds. Diego. The convention center is a lot bigger. Just saying. We'll, we'll, we'll make they'll, room. They'll, they'll, and they'll, they'll I don't have totally, to get a hotel. They will totally... <laughs> Move yeah, out of, we could uh, drive. We're not flying. So anyway, um, so that's it's, it's the summer. Summer is always busy for beer festivals. Yeah, it's, so it's, there's it, all it's, kinds it's of shit going on. Full swing. And I mean, sure. we mentioned these five, but there's 50 other ones that are happening that will probably be at or maybe be near or whatever. And, oh yeah, especially know. like Southern California where we're at. I mean, there's a taste of brews coming up in Long Beach. There's all kinds yeah. of stuff going on. Yeah. So, yeah. so anyway, so final thoughts on this beer. Delicious. What do you guys think? D- delicious. And like I said, I just I just love being able to get a mouthful of hops and um, <laughs> not it. have to stop. Can't, I can't? No? No. Oh, fuck. All right, go ahead. Go on. Mouthful uh, of hops. I lo- yeah, mouthful of hops and uh, not having to stop at, like, number three if I want to have a decent day the next day. Yeah, you know I get I mean? that. Like, you know, a lot when of, I'm getting a mouthful of stuff, I don't want to stop at number three A lot either. of times with those residual, like, big hop beers, you get this residual... They're not residual big hop beers. You get this residual hoppy thing left behind like i don't know if it's the oils it's just, it's just, yeah it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's the residual bitterness yeah. you know the stickiness that you kind of get that from this. that tongue scraping mm-hmm. yeah and i mean you do get a bitter pop from it for sure i'm sorry i'm a huge fan of these beers that taste like they're big but they're mm. not mm-hmm. it's so like every i want to make beers like that yeah. and i want yeah. more beers like that to be on the market because could you imagine having like a chocolate rain that was six <laughs> percent from the like would Chocolate that even rain work? is great. Would that even work? Who knows? Though? But let's let's do it. Yeah, I think I, I That's think all it's, I'm saying. I don't want to say it's easier to do it this way. This is actually. Did I say it's easier? No, no, no. I'm I'm saying that. But okay. what, I'm, what I'm getting at is that like, um, this is another one of those beers that when you drink it, it's like this really displays the prowess of the brewers that are making this beer. Yeah, for sure. Because okay. you cannot, You're right. you cannot make a mistake on this beer. But at the same time, something like Chocolate Rain or a great double or triple IPA. Brought says down the to 6%. same thing about those brewers. Like I can make this awesome IP. I can make mm-hmm. you know the brewery can make chocolate rain. They can make Black Tuesday. It's the, I mean those are beers I I would assume are completely just on a different level as far as craftsmanship. Right, know? right. So it's 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 one of those things where it's like yes I love Black Tuesday, but if I could have a sessionable Black Tuesday, that's that's like. The best of both worlds. Yeah, you know that would yeah. be interesting. A sessionable Black Tuesday, Tyler. Um, let's talk about that. Get on it. No, let's I just it. I love how this the, this hopefully is a trendsetter where you know we will have more of these like you know really super flavorful flavorful especially hoppy beers that are at a lower ABV. Mm, I'm not sure there's there's, there's more the merrier. There's more beers that lend themselves to doing this than. Not. Yeah. Well, that's actually right. a good. I mean, because there may be a lot of them out there that we're not aware of. I mean, like uh, Bell's Two Hearted, that would kind of fit into that category, right? No. <laughs> no, that's no. a pale ale. And no, it's not. It's an IPA. Remember, we've had this conversation. Have we? Yes. I'm thinking of Zombie Dust, which is a pale ale. Yes, that is true. That's another good yeah. example. Yeah, that's yeah, a good example. Exactly. It's on that, a session. It's like four. Right. It's, okay. It's like a, so an extra whatever. Pale. Mm. But you know what? Throw throw into the comments or whatever your favorite like sessionable, really hoppy beer. Yeah, I'd love definitely. Because I'd like to get a list for We're myself. We're being loose with the term sessionable. Let's say between four and six. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I know it's six anything below confident. five is supposed to be sessionable, but or you know what? Anything below four. Yeah. Is it below four? Below four. Below four. Oh, see, I, I keep moving the ceiling up yeah, for I myself. Yeah, below four and a half. Technically, yeah. technically, like, below four is session, but... To me, anything below six is session. The Brewers <laughs> Association is a little higher than that. Yeah. Though, so. so, anyway, um, yeah, between four and six, that's a good range. That's a good range. A good range. Uh, yeah, so... Throw throw it in your comments. I'd love to. I'd love to get a list of beers Drake's. to drink. Yeah. Great job. Yeah, good job, John. Absolutely. Thank love you very much. Cheers to you guys, and uh, cheers to everybody. Stay safe and drink beer. Yeah.